Listener's discretion is advised as we'll be talking about mental health issues. If anyone out there is struggling with any mental health issues, call Lifeline on 131114 and please reach out to your family and friends. G'day. Welcome to True Blue History. I'm Adam Bloom. Welcome back to part three of our chat with former Royal Australian Medical Corps Sergeant McQuilty Quirk NSC. If you haven't listened to part two, go back and listen to part two before listening to part three. Coco will be talking about his long recovery after being blown up by an IED and the determination he showed when cancer tragically affected his family. By cultivating a positive mindset and developing resilience, Coco and his family got through that tough time together. He is now a motivational speaker, sharing his story to help others who face similar adversity. The future is bright for Coco and his family. Thank you to Coco for coming on and sharing your truly inspirational story. And to all our veterans, thank you for your service to our country and lest we forget all those who made the ultimate sacrifice. No worries, Adam. It's a pleasure to be here again. So it appears that some of your personal attributes that have marked your journey and your recovery are your strength of character and resilience. How important was that when your wife, Tammy, was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2013? Yeah, mate, it was probably... um... It, it, uh, for me, I think anyone that's been that's a soldier and gets hurt, wounded, injured, you can sort of um, you take that on board and understand that there's a process that happens with your recovery. When it happens to somebody that you love and cherish, it's um, a real massive tick in the gap. Um, and I remember clearly, like, she didn't even have to tell me. She... She'd found the lump and then she went and um, got tested in early January of 2013. And um, as soon as I saw her, I just knew in my like bones that she had it. She had the breast cancer and I just turned around and walked out of the barracks basically. I went to my mate's place and just sort of sat down and didn't know what to do. Um, that, you know, I think that, on top of learning how to walk again was probably the toughest period of my life and probably the worst worst I'd ever felt um, because you can't do anything like you know watch watched uh, watch my dad go through cancer treatment as well and you just can't help you can't take away any of that pain you can't take any of that treatment away you can't be um, like a like a bit of a brick in the mortar and the wall for her. It's just, you've just got to watch her take it on on her own. So, you know, it just, it just meant that I had to dig a bit deeper into that little bag of tricks and resilience and, and try and get through that with it. So for you, Coco, was it a sense of that, you know, you saw Tam and, and it was the unknown of, you know, like you were covering from your injuries, but like you mentioned your father as well, having cancer and, and during... You, you, you talk about the time of this was probably the hardest time of your life. And during this period, you also lost your dad. How significant was that? And did you feel that the, you were starting to slide into a depression again or was with everything that had happened? Yeah, definitely, mate. Um, as much as anyone could say that they would, would be able to stay on optimum level of of performance through a period like that it was that was honestly one of the darkest periods of our lives together and the hardest thing too you know you watch dad get treatment for, for cancer and i'll watch him slip away and then at the same time watching my wife get treatment for cancer and it's tough to sort of break that in, into two pieces and say you know what it's not going to happen the same way or it's, uh, it's a different type of cancer so you know, that will be fine. You still go through that period where you think, well, you know, dad had all the treatment in the world and he hung on for 12 months 
longer than what anyone expected him to do. But at the end of the day, cancer is still cancer. And it doesn't matter what type it is, it's going to hit you hard. Um, and I did. I, I, I capitulated and um, it, it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible, mate. It's, um, there's a, there's probably still a part of me that hates every, every, um, everything that happened from that moment she was diagnosed. And, um, you know, it's still emotional to talk about. Mate, absolutely. And, and it's, you know, like, mate, some people can relate to to what you've said with, you know, the, the loss of a father. And, and also it's, in a sense, mate, it's, it's a unique circumstance because you've got your wife going through it and you're also dealing with the loss of your father, which, mate, that for some people they, you know, they wouldn't come back from that. And you've shown resilience through this whole journey and, and also going through your own, you know, you, you're learning to walk again. And, and like this part of your life, mate, I, I look and I, I absolutely take my hat off to you because it's it's the resilience that you've shown that most people would just say it's too hard and, and give up, mate. And, you know, I, I take my hat off to you, mate, and commend you for, for not giving up. And so... Where did you find that strength? Where where was it? Was it Tam and the kids, or where did you find that strength? Mate, I, to be honest, it, all the strength came from Tam. She was she was the one that was going through chemo and, and bedridden for days, and she'd get up and run the house like nothing was going on with her. But she, she was phenomenal. Like there's, she's definitely my Wonder Woman, and and our kids too. Like, you put two kids in the middle of that that are young and still learning and um you know they became our little um walking sticks through that whole period the, the amount of stuff that logan did for me and they did for mum was amazing it was um i think it was a, a bit of family strength that shone through there plus all the support we had from friends and stuff but um, the way Tam was able to handle that stuff, um, support me with the grief I was facing with dad, but then, you know, with losing dad and then um, trying to help mum get through that process. And she just stood up through the whole thing and just turned into this wonder woman um, in real life and, and made everybody around her feel like they were still important and still loved and cared for and you know that's an amazing thing to see when you stand back and look at it when you are trying to deal with problems that come your way mate it's as you say you know we we often through uh you know through a crisis we we turn we find strength from our our loved ones and you did that mate you, you with with tam and and also your mom and and your family and and so you speak on, so you, you got through that part of the really tough time with, with Tam and, and losing your dad and you speak now, you, you're, a, you're a motivational speaker and, and you, you talk to people about coming through adversity and a positive mindset. Who inspires you and how do you maintain a positive mindset going forward now? Um, that's a really good question. Um... I think one of the biggest inspirations that I have is my wife. Um, you know, with what she's been through and she continues to walk tall every day. That's something that a lot of people don't don't um, get the opportunity to get to do or, or take the opportunity to do. Uh, I think what what we learn is um, when you walk through adversity, the people who mean the most to you will always be beside you. We always get taught through school, you know, goal setting, look look ahead, set a goal and it's at the front or, you know, look behind and learn from what you've done wrong in your past. But um, when you're going through a tough time, the people that mean the most to you will always be beside you. And I had a really, really strong um, um, set of mates that we were all going through stuff together, but we sort of just built each other up, stayed positive through it all. And I've got people like, you know, Paul Warren lost his leg that, um, you know, we regularly talk and make sure that we talk about issues that are hurting us 
and that's the best way to do it. The other thing too is um, you need professional help, uh, as you well understand, mate. Um, professional help is important. You can't do things on your own, and the stuff that your mates can't help you with, there's stuff that your partner can't help you with, no matter how open you are with their communication wise. There's a lot of stuff that we as soldiers won't talk about with our families because it's, it's too much hurt. Um, but a professional ear to listen and to guide you through that process is really important. And I think people forget that. And that, you know, part of the issue nowadays, we get these young kids that don't want to talk about anything. And um, if we can only teach them that it's okay to talk to somebody, and then, you know, once you feel comfortable, go and see someone professional help and get the help that you need. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a matter of waking up every day and taking those three steps and then living life and enjoying it. Absolutely, mate. And I think I had this I had this conversation with former second commando veteran Andy Fermo and we spoke about it and, and I've spoken to you about it for and it's in the first part of the podcast is it's okay to be vulnerable. You, you have to, sometimes it's okay to put your hand up and say, I'm not okay and I'm, I'm really not doing, you know, I'm, I'm not great and I do need a bit of a hand, you know, and, and it's it's okay and, and I'm forever trying to break the stigma of, and I just before I jumped on the call with you today, I learned of a, yep. a, a mate of mine, his mate was a bodybuilder and, and he committed suicide at 29, my age. And, you know, that's, and he didn't speak of, you know, he didn't speak of it and, and you know, he committed suicide and, and it's, mate, it's a big thing. It's, it's, it's a big thing at the moment that, you know, it's okay to speak. And I, I've, you know, that's why I'm sharing my story and I'm sharing your story for people out there who are struggling to go, hey, look. You know, we've both put our hands up. We've both said, yeah, we've gone through some, some times that have been tough. But you you need to put your hand up and get that help. It's it's so important and break the stigma around it's not, it's, you know, it's weak to speak. It's not weak to speak. I keep saying that. It's not weak to speak. Absolutely, mate. I think um, I've been down in that, that, you know, the depth where you don't hear any positive voices around you. And it's hard to hear positive voice when you get that far down the rabbit hole um, and you feel like the only way out is to, you know, end your own life, you, you know, you suicide. But um, it's certainly something that I know I have to talk about, you know. So every time I speak, I talk about the two times I told Pam, I kids and everything would be better in the morning because you feel such a burden. Um, there's a lot of survivor guilt that goes around in my body and my head. But it's it's really, really, really hard to, for people who haven't been through it to understand why you can't hear positive voices when you're that far in the hole. Uh, and it's, you know, it's okay. It's okay to be in the hole. It's okay to hit your up. It's okay if you will fall off. It's just you know, don't lay there and take it. Just get up and take three steps. And it doesn't matter what direction you take. You just you make a decision and it, you get your brain thinking about making a decision and you start with small steps and you just continually walk, you know. And that's, it's, um, it's a tough subject to talk about. And, but I think... We, we need to make um, suicide awareness a positive story and where people feel comfortable talking about it. The same we do, we need to do it with bullying and we need to do it with domestic violence. Just don't, you know, don't hide it in the shadows. Don't leave it. That's not our business. It's everyone's business. Like, we've just got to be more proactive about it and the more we talk about it, make common language and positive language, the better we all will be. Absolutely, mate. And I think what springs to mind for me is and, and something you've done as well throughout your whole, through everything that's happened to you and everything that I've done as well is you've you've got to fight. You know, there's, there's dark days and there's days where, like you said, 
you don't want to lift your head off the pillow and you don't you don't want to get up out of bed but you've got to fight and you've you've got to you know because you know yourself coco the, life is the greatest gift of all and you know we've we've got to be we are we've got so much to be grateful for in life and you know like you've seen firsthand mate that we are so lucky in this country and you've gone over to other countries where they're not as blessed as we are that you know they're fighting wars they're they're struggling in poverty they're you know so we are so lucky in this country. We, we have got absolutely nothing to cry or whinge about. We just got to be so grateful for life. And as you say, mate, take those three steps and you can, you can start achieving greatness. And, you know, there's, look, there's people out there, mate, that'll say, oh, you know, don't be, you know, don't be so naive. And I, I'm, I'm not being naive. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm someone like you who has struggled and has, you know, has attempted suicide. And, and I've been down the bottom too, where there was no, there was no positive voices at all. I've had to work hard with the professional help, like you said, to get to this point of you know being positive on life and having a positive and mate doing a check-in doing a simple check-in with your friends like you know check in once a week and just say hey how you going mate is everything okay or you know do you need anything and and that's what i found the greatest thing that's helped me mate it's just so true and i think what we forget too is the military get taught that you can't do anything without a team so there's no way that an infantry section could do a, a full frontal attack without support. So they need other sections in support, they need artillery, they need cavalry. So we do everything where we always we get to a mission, we look at what the mission is and we go, right, hey, Adam, I need this, do you can provide that? Can you do this for me? Yep, no problem. When we get out of the army for some reason, people forget that or they feel like they can't ask for help. That's, you know, one of the greatest gifts we have is the ability to communicate. So ask for help. And it's, it's just treat it like a mission. You you have an objective. You need to take the objective. The enemy is whatever you want to make. It's, you know, um, negativity is the enemy. Sweet. Well, I know how to fix it, but I need help. So let's get the game back together and let's start taking some positive steps. We talk about, I talk about a lot in the speaking stuff I do about inner violence and it's about how when you feel like shit, where you don't want to get out of bed that day or you get weighed down by a lot of things, negative boys in your head, you need inner violence to get up and you need to take those three steps. You need to have the inner violence to be able to do that. You need to be able to squash those negative voices and say, you know what, not today, I'm getting up, let's go. You know, I'm going to look at myself in the mirror and I'm going to tell myself, you're good, you're okay, let's brush your teeth, have a shower, let's go, let's get into it. Um, and, it, you know, it comes back to communicating, just being an understanding of yourself, your limitations and that we can't do it on our own and ask for that help when, when you need it. Um, so important. Absolutely. So reflecting on what happened to you in August 2011, it appears you are still on this earth for a purpose. Do you think you have worked out what that purpose is and how are you fulfilling that today and going into the future? Uh, tough one. Uh, I, for me, I think my purpose is um, reminding and coaching people adversity that it's you know reminding them that it's okay to go through it and then coaching people how to get through it and I think it's it's about using my journey to highlight that you know you can have some of the worst things happen to you in your life like dying three times it's not probably not much more I could have gone through in that period in 2011 and if it wasn't for my mate pitching in, I would certainly not be here talking to you today. Um, and if I can coach people through that, then that's my goal. If I can coach one person with this podcast that you can go through shit and still come through the other side and take a breath, 
a fresh um, a breath of fresh air, then you know what, I'm I'm winning. Um, and all we got to do is turn turn one mind at a time and face it the right way and help them through. That's, and that's you know that's the process that we'll do. So you know I think that's my goal and that's what I'm here to do and that's my purpose. So um, doing this stuff helps doing podcasts and talking to people and coffee catch-ups and reminding people like, hey, people ask me all the time, like, that's a shit time. My perspective is, no, that's, that's the best hour of my life. You know, my mate saved my life and I got mates that walk around one with missing limbs, you know, like there's always someone worse off than me and you. You know, we're going through shit, but Imagine waking up every morning with a missing limb. That's, that's you know that's the people that have it harder. Absolutely, mate. I I recently had Curtis McGrath on the podcast and combat engineer that lost his legs in 2012 from an IED and and the three time Paralympian and and mate, reading his story and getting him on and telling his story, mate, it's it's like your story that. They're all resilience, like they, you know, you guys show so much resilience to, to come back mm. and, and, you know, and like you said, yeah, they've got it harder than what we do, mate. Like there's so many people that have got, that are missing limbs that, you know, we take for granted, you know, having all our limbs, like we, we do, we, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of it, mate, I, I take it for granted, I've got, you know, I've got all my limbs and, you know, I, I, it's not when, it's not until you stop and you actually, yep. like you just said, you know, they've got it harder than what we do. That's absolutely right, mate. It's, it's um, you know, I, I nearly lost my right hand and left arm and right leg and left leg. So um, I think, I've you know, I've got a little bit better understanding of what they go on to, but at the same time, I have got everything. Like, I, I have both legs and both arms, you know. I can walk and run and jump and ride a bike. That's, that's the blessing. So... Um, if people just worried about, you know, making sure that they can get up every day and do the right thing around around themselves with the right people, like we'll, we'll all be better off at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, we need people like you and me to help coach people through. Recently, Coco, you, you got involved with your NRL game development officer in North Queensland. What What's this role and, and what's this role entail? Yeah, that's uh, one of my favorite roles it's um predominantly working in school um before and after school uh activities with kids uh a lot of it's around teaching kids how to run pass catch evade um and then as we get a little bit more in depth with them they learn how to tackle for the game rugby right league but i think the important thing is they're encouraging good body movement um, how to have fun with your friends and also fundamental skills like catch and throw that, um, you know, teachers don't have time to do anymore because the curriculum is so full. So it's, a, it's, and it's around rugby league football, working in pathways and helping out teams around and coaching coaches and stuff like that. So it's one of the, one of my favorite jobs to do in the whole world. And, You've mentioned also too that you do your ERGT underwater escape training. What is it? What is it about this that you enjoy most? Uh, yeah, we we essentially I'm coaching people through adversity, um, and I'm part of a team that can do this. So we we're teaching soldiers how to um, get out of a ditched helicopter in the water. Um, we teach them a set of drills that they comply with, they follow. Um, there's a number of different types of training that we do, but essentially at the end of the day, that's, that's a bit of adversity you've got to get through. It's not nice, it doesn't feel good. Water goes up your nose, you're upside down. It's, um, you've got a blindfold. And if I can, you know, it allows me to coach through adversity, which is a big part of the role of teaching about the safety aspects of being in the, in an aircraft that ditches and um, I actually got into that with a mate of mine rang me and said, "Hey, dude, you've got your 
open water dive and I said, yeah, mate. And he said, right, I put him for this job so you can come in and be a trainer with us. So it was just, you know, a mate, a mate reached out and next minute I'm working with ERGT safety diving and instructing as a, you know, a helicopter underwater escape trainer. So uh, it's, it's a blessing, that job. It's a really good plus. It is very good on my body. Um, being in the water, there's no stress on my body. Um, still get tired mentally and physically from it, but it's a great job to be in, mate. Just swim like a seal all day. <laughs> Teaching people how to get out. Absolutely, mate. And I know myself because as I spoke to you, you know, I, I fly in helicopters too. So I, I know exactly and in my job mate we actually we don't do underwater training so it's you know i wouldn't even know where to start so it's it's and we <laughs> where we it's kind of an interesting story coco we actually fly over water and like that's predominantly what i do and yet they don't teach us the training so <laughs> yeah it's a, it i can understand why it would be an interesting yeah. you know it's it yeah it's an interesting yep. It, it, yeah, we we could we could talk about that and and politics, but I'm not going to get into that with with my company. But anyway, it's it is what it is. And but yeah, look, it's it, it's a conundrum, isn't it? It it is, mate. It is, and, and you know, it's and I understand what you mean by adversity and and going <laughs> into you know going into a traumatic experience because. Yeah. Yeah, going in underwater is it's not a natural thing. It's it's not a you know you're fighting everything in your body to you know be oh my god this you know I'm underwater I'm upside down like you know things I can understand it mate and and so you're in the water with them and coaching them to to get out or how does how does it work? Yeah, we're in the water, mate. We're in the uh, in the module and. And we go down on the water with them. We've got a mask on so we can see what they're doing. We can help guide them. Um, we debrief them after every roll. And um, as a safety diver, you're underwater for most of the day, and you just you're you're a level of safety essentially to help them out, get them to the surface quick. Um, so yeah, it's good, mate. It's it's um, one of my favourite jobs to to do that one. Absolutely, and also you're a Swiss Eight ambassador. What does what does this role entail for you, Coco? Yeah, so Swiss Eight um, is actually a non for profit organisation started by a couple of good mates of ours. Um, uh, good good background. They're both they're both veterans. They served in the military, and they wanted to help people push through. Um, adversity and suicide and learn a bit about resilience so they develop an app that um, uh, because phones are predominantly 99% of the young people's lives they've got an app that um, you can um, download for free and it's um, got a whole series of um, eight different um, pillars that we talk about particularly sleep um, nutrition, exercise, and um, uh, mental health. So we talk about doing uh, meditation and stuff like that. So it's it's uh, available for everybody. We encourage a lot of people to download it at suicide.org. Um, and my role as an ambassador is to... to basically promote the product what I, I use it when i speak i talk about the aid i talk about um we also do stuff with suicide awareness training so i get to go and do that and uh promote the aid as a product um with, with wherever i go nationally um uh, which is pretty cool uh, very very good organization good bunch of people and um pretty proud to be one of their first ambassadors on that on that website so um and mate any anyone can do it we're trying to push it out to everybody and you know especially first responders like yourself just got a heap of tips that you can use it's got numbers contact places everything so it's uh, a really good bit of kit mate um 
I recommend you download it. Absolutely, I'll I'll definitely download it. I think anything where you know the where we can help, as you say, veterans and any first responder is uh, you know it's a great thing and a great tool that that can be used. So yeah, absolutely, mate. I'll definitely do that. So. You seem, Coco, to have a real passion for helping others and, and you know, with, with telling your story and, you know, working in with veterans and also people who have who have had to overcome adversity. What do you enjoy about this role of working with veterans and people who do suffer from, who have overcome adversity and gone through troubled times in their life? Uh, yeah, speaking type of things is one of my favorite parts um with my own little business doing it and um i'm lucky to be able to go and talk about that stuff and and present my story and just help people get through uh, anything that could be class adversity and i don't care how big or small it seems to other people it's how significant it is to you and how it hurts you that you know, the beauty of adversity is my trauma is not the same as your trauma. So um, being able to help people get through stuff, uh, that's, you know, that's my purpose, I suppose. That's what I was left on this earth to do, and that's what I'll continue to aim and do. But I love telling my story, especially to new audiences that don't have that appreciation of military context or, you know, injuries and illnesses and being wounded in action. Um, and being able to talk about stuff um, to help other people, mate, and you know yourself, it's it's very cathartic for yourself. It's, it's really good to go through that process and get it to a point where I can speak about it now without emotion attached but I'm able to bring that emotion in whenever I want to and you know I have a whole whole room laughing and smiling and crying and getting angry about my story because um, I think that the gift that we have is we're better talkers than we are writers as we said numerous times um, but yeah I just want to be able to help one person in a group of five or ten, a hundred or a thousand, you know, if one person comes up afterwards and says, you know what, that really resonated, I'm going to make some changes, I'm going to change my direction, and I'm going to get back and start doing things for me, then you know what, that's a successful day. Absolutely, mate. It's a word that I like to use, Coco, is empowering. When people say, you know, like they hear, like when, when people have heard my story on, on the podcast that I've done or, you know, I tell people they, you know, when they say, oh, that's so empowering and you, you're inspired. It, it, I, for me, it's hard to hear that I'm inspirational because I, I don't see myself I just see myself as an ordinary person, mate. Like I just, you know, I'm, I'm simply, I'm here with a purpose and I don't, yep. you know, I, I don't, I don't feel that I'm any, any different to anyone else. I, I'm just simply, I've got a, a story that's unique to me and, you know, like you, if I can just help one person, then I've achieved my mission on this earth. And, and that's, that's what it's about, mate. If we can, if the world would be such a better place, if we all just, got along and you know and tried to help each other instead of trying to pull each other down the world would be such a better place absolutely mate so going forward to what like you've done some work with with the veterans and and also the recent events that happened in afghanistan with the taliban taking back over the country have you noticed with the veterans you have been working with has it affected them and and also has it affected you with the scenes that you that you were seeing and saw yeah you know what i i think i've got a different sort of approach to this um at the end of the day i'm i'm proud of our contribution to giving afghanistan 20 years of of um stability where you know women and girls can get put up in the world and, and get education and um you know, we reduce the amount of lives are getting lost in that in that civilian space because of our presence there. 
And, you know, I've got a lot of mates that were um, affected pretty badly by it, I think. And that's fair, you know, we've, there's a lot of work that's been undone in that space. But at the same time, I think we've just got to accept that it's happened. Um, at some stage, it was going to happen. We had to sort of pull out and let them stand on their own two feet. And, you know, it's gone the way it's gone. For me, it didn't affect me because from now, I see 20 years has been um, a much larger, more positive impact than the last six months since Taliban has took over and had. And that's something I think we've got to remind ourselves is that we we went in there to do a job and we did a great job. We went into East Timor to do a job, we did a great job. You know, we went to Iraq to do a job and we did a great job. And, you know, Rwanda, Somalia, Vietnam, wherever we've gone, in Australia, we've done a great job. So, you know what? I'm happy to make sure that me and my family are good and my mates are good. Um, I continue to check in with them. But like, I don't watch the news too, so I don't really, you know, it doesn't really bother me that we've got things happening on that side of the world like we spoke about earlier. Um, that's the beauty of living in Australia too. We're in a, the greatest country in the world. so. You know, whatever happens over there happens. There's nothing we can do to change that. Mate, I think that's a really good way to, to look at it. And, and, you know, I think it's a really, it's a great way to look at, at your service and it's a great way to look at the job that you, like you said, went to Afghanistan. You, you gave, you know, tw- 20 years of, you know, you went in, you did fantastic work. Same as Iraq. East Timor, Vietnam, you know, you're right. You you, you went in and, and, yeah, it's it's a really good way to look at look at your service and, and it's a real, like you, mate, like, you, like you've said through the whole podcast, it's just positivity. It's just looking on the positive side of, of, of your service and, and always seeing the, the positive side of life. And I think, mate, it's a really great way to look at it. And mate, you sh- you absolutely should be proud of your service, mate. It, it it's fantastic to you know for where and I know us as Australians, mate, we are so proud of our our veterans and and anyone who pulls a uniform on and defends our country and and you know signs that blank check, mate, that could be giving of your life. That's that's what a that's what a veteran is, and and you know it's. It's coming to the call of arms, mate, and and yeah, all I can say is on behalf of Australia, thank you, thank you for what you and and all veterans do. Yeah, man, it's funny because I joined the army to meet women and play rugby, and I met my wife. Um, so the army's given me the best part of my life um, for eighteen years, and I've got no regrets. When people question me when I say that, but I don't have any regrets. I made decisions throughout my career. Um, some weren't good decisions, but at the end of the day, I made those decisions. I live with those decisions. I'm happy to live with the consequences of those decisions, but I've got some of the best things in my life because of the military, um, you know, the wife, um, kids, mateship that, you know, we transcend time. We might not see each other for 10 years, but the moment we catch up, we catch up like it was yesterday, we saw each other last. And that's the difference between having mates and having friends. Um, mates will stand the test of time and friends come and get us. And that's the whole, whole piece of it. You know, I'm, I'm really proud of my service, mate. I'm proud of my wife's service. I'm proud of my mate's service. I'm proud of everyone that wore the uniform before and after me. If I can help them get through their bad days, and you know, I'm I'm winning at the end of the day. Mate, absolutely, and and I think, mate, like you said in the start of the podcast, you know, it was like. If you you could have taken that other road, mate, the other road that travelled, you know, and gone down a life of crime, and you know, it, it who knows where you could have been, mate. The military, you know, for what for what you've gone through, 
as you say, you, you, you're proud of your service because it defines who McQuilty Quirk is. You know, it, it, it's, it's made McQuilty Quirk who, who he is. And, you know, like you said, mate, and any young listener, you know, who, who might listen to this and, and be in that crossroads of, you know, going down that path, you know, maybe take the other road and, and, you know, take the road that doesn't lead to, you know, sitting in jail in, in a cell and, you know, like take the road that you might have, you might not have traveled. And for you, mate, it's, it's been, you know, it's been a fantastic career. I mean, yes, you've had to come overcome adversity, but mate, it's, you wouldn't change it. And, and that's, you know, that's one thing that you can be proud of. Yeah, mate, it's easy to do the wrong thing. It's an easy course of action to take. Um, and invariably, the, the, the right thing to do is going to be the hardest thing to do, and it's going to be uncomfortable. But you're right, mate. We, when we were mate, like back from school and mate, back in the day, you get into mischief, and it's very easy to take it a step further each time um, and find yourself on the wrong spot online. For me, um, joining the army was the best thing I ever did. Absolutely, mate. And you know, I, I said it in my in podcast McQuilty a couple of weeks uh, weeks ago that I thank my parents for getting the extra help for me when I struggled through high school because some of the other kids who struggled they went down they you know their parents didn't care and my parents did care and they're actually now sitting in jail cells and you know they chose a life of crime. My parents gave me an education and I'm forever grateful for what they've done for me, mate, because without an education, you've got no future. And, and you know, it, I thank them every single day for what, you know, putting in the extra time to get me extra help. It's it's given me a chance in life. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. So I understand, mate, you're currently writing a book to document your experiences, what what do you hope that your readers will take away from reading your story? Well, uh, yeah, it's um, I am. It's taken a while, but ten years, and I'm and I'm uh, still got a long way to go. But uh, hopefully, we can get it done, like you say, this year, and um, get it out this year. Eleven years this year since I got wounded in action. So I just I want the people. To be able to read that and then um, have a look at how you know we get through things and how we apply a different thought process um, and if I can coach them through some bad parts of their life while then reading this book and understanding that trauma is trauma at the end of the day and you know we can always get through it with some help and if you can't do it on your own you can do it with some help so uh, that's what I want people to take away that it was an adventure as much as it was um, you know adversity and mental and physical health stuff going on but at the end of the day I did some of the best things I could have ever done in the world played rugby with some great mates um, met my wife and you know I just want people to see that anyone Anyone can achieve their dreams. Anyone can do what they want to do when they're a kid. Um, anyone can be a firefighter. Anyone can join the army and be a medic. Anyone can, you know, join the air force. Anyone can be a policeman. It's just don't give up and just keep pushing. That's all it takes. Just, you know, inner violence. Take those three steps. Um, set your goals. Put them at the end of the hallway. Don't limit yourself with fear, lack of knowledge, or believe in a negative vibe. Get in the hallway, take the heat, take the closed doors, just keep walking down that hallway. You'll get to your dream eventually, and um, it'll change your life. Um, you know, that if, if we can live, love, and laugh, um, and you can find that in my book, then you know what? That, that's what I want people to do live love and laugh and achieve their dreams mate i i'm just i'm absolutely nodding in agreement with you like i'm just sitting the other side of you and just going absolutely like 
anyone out there go and chase your dreams and don't let the knockers say that you you can't achieve you know anything because mate if i if i had to listen to the knockers that's had laughed at me when i said i was going to start a podcast i wouldn't be speaking to you i wouldn't be speaking to other inspirational people and you know i i just i just defied the odds and went you know what i'm i'm going to go for it and you know it and you know also to one thing i will add to that coco is that you've You've got it's hard work too. You've got to put in the hard work as well. It's it's no, nothing comes easy, and you've got to be willing to work. Absolutely. You've got to be willing to work at it to be. You know, uh, it's nothing comes easy, and you never gifted anything in life. You've you've got to work hard for for your dreams, and and at times you will get knocked down, and you will be you will be knocked down from people who who are jealous of what you're doing, and you've just got to put that to the side. And, and stay focused on your goal. And like you said, mate, you just keep walking, keep walking those three steps, just keep walking those three steps. And then eventually you'll look and you'll have achieved your goal and then set your next goal. Yep, absolutely, mate. If it was easy, we would all be millionaires and married supermodels, mate. Absolutely, mate. But uh, I've learned, Coco, that sometimes it's uh, it's not about looks, mate. And you know it too. It's not about looks. It's what's inside the person. It's, it's <laughs> you know, what's inside of the person. And that's... Absolutely. If you can love what's inside of a person from, you know, how they look, it's, mate, you, that's, that's, what you, that's what you want in life. And that's what it's about. And so, Kogo, what are your plans going forward in the future with your family and with Tam? Yeah, well, we've got a um, young fella in grade 12 now. We've got a daughter that's out of school. So uh, we've got one left to get through grade 12 this year. Um, sort of push the 40 angle a bit more and do a bit more coaching. But then developing my business to go from, um, to do, you know, keep doing the speaking stuff, but then build into that coaching leadership coaching and um, business coaching stuff where I can have an impact on how we we can get people to be at optimum capacity at work, which in turn helps the business um, grow and um, promote itself. So, you know, got a few things in the pipeline that we're doing, plus finish my book, um, uh, get that out and then uh, yeah, just getting into shirts and hats as well, mate. That's, you know, one of the things that we're sort of working on this year is put some merchandise out so people can buy it, which will, you know, help with the web page and, and stuff like that and, and help get the word out. So I'll definitely be sending you a shirt, mate, to say thank you for getting me on your podcast and um, I'll add you to the website. But that's, you know, that's just work out sold at the moment. Pam's chasing her dreams and I'm happy to sit back and clap her on and um, champion her. She championed me for a long time, mate, and she still does. So if I can get her dreams sorted with her, then that, you know, we're, we're living the dream as it is and that's just going to put the cherry on top. Absolutely, mate, and, and I appreciate you sending me a shirt, mate, and I'm going to do the same for you. I'll, I'm going to send you one of my shirts, and, and it's just my way of saying thank you for coming on the show and, and sharing your story, mate. And, and I want to, I just want to say, Coco, your story is, is one of true inspiration, never giving up, and grit, and, you know, just absolute determination to, to fight through. And, mate, I'm, I'm so honoured to have you on True Blue History. And, and I thank you for coming on and sharing your story with us, mate. And, and I just want to say thank you for your service. And thank you for everything you do for veterans and first responders. And just thank you for your positive outlook on life. So, Coco, thank you so much for coming on True Blue History. Mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and I just want to thank you too, mate. This podcast that you run is going to change change some people's mindset. And I think the work you're doing is really important. And I commend you on that. Um, and thank you for giving myself and my mate um, a chance just to, you know, share a bit of positive positivity. And, you know, let's get, let's get moving and take those three hard steps every day mate so thank you very much for having me on thanks for listening don't forget to subscribe and leave a review for the podcast on whatever platform you get your podcasts and if you feel like supporting us you can now via our patreon page that's patreon.com 
forward slash true blue history or buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash true blue history and check out our new website trueblue history.com for more great content.